Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, good evening teacher. Now we are going to start another week and we are almost ending this, um, this course because uh, ending this day, we have just five more days. So we are almost, almost at the end of the, of the course. I hope that you are working on the platform because it is almost time to end uh, this course. So you are not going to have time if you are not working in the platform already. So I think almost uh, all of you have in the work in the platform and that's very good. So now we are going to create a vocabulary because we are going to talk about some a, a specific vocabulary. Then we are going to talk about the creation of questions with how. But let me change something a little bit because it's look really weird. So let me change this and we are going to be ready to start for this a session. So let's see. So it's very so. Now we are going to create a vocabulary. So we are going to start. And what is uh, this vocabulary about? It is uh, talking about measurement. Uh, also, we are going to talk about location and we are going to talk about position. So we are going to use uh, this vocabulary also to create or to ask uh, using a DWH word, how. So we are going to create a, this vocabulary. We are going to uh, write the words and we are going to uh, say the name of the word. And also we are going to uh, say the translation of this word into Spanish. But in this case, we are just uh, uh, going to write the word in English. So we have, and I want to do it a little bit just like this because it is not going to work. So we have some words. For the first one, we have measurement. And this word in Spanish is um, said medición or medida. That's the uh, specific uh, translation for this word measurement that is medición or medida. Then we have metric, that is metrico. Then we have compare, que es comparar, shape, que es forma o figura, near or nearly. That near is cerca de and nearly is casi. Then we have just over, and in this case, just over is un poco más in Spanish. Then we have space, that is espacio. Then we have big, bigger and biggest. In this case, we are using this with the comparative and superlative form of the adjectives. And this is something that we were studying the last week. So we have big, bigger, and biggest. Que es grande, el más grande, eh, y así. We are talking about the comparative and superlative form of these adjectives. Then we have another one, and it's cool, cooler, and coolest. And in Spanish, cool is fresco, then we're going to apply the comparative and superlative form to uh, talk about uh, this adjective. Then we have empty. In Spanish is a uh, um, vacío. Empty, then we have emptier. Emptiest. Then we have full, lleno. Fuller and fullest. Heavy, que es pesado. 
heavier and heaviest. Then we have light. That in this case, we are not talking about uh, loose. In this case, we are talking about ligero. Light is ligero. Then we have long, largo, longer, longest. Then we have warm, tibio cálido. Warmer and warmest. Then we have narrow, narrower and narrowest. But in Spanish, it's mean estrecho. Then we have another one that is shallow. That in Spanish is poco profundo. Then we have short, corto. Then we have a small, pequeño. Then we have thick, that is grueso. Measure, that is medir, unit, unidad, estimate, estimar, edge, borde, close to, Cerca de, just under. Poco menos que. Approximately. Aproximadamente. Size. Tamaño o talla, enough. Suficiente. Guess, in this case, is acercar o suponer, both of them. Guess, surface, superficie, about the same. Sobre lo o la misma. Then we have Exact or exactly. Exacto o exactamente o precisamente. Then we have cold, frío, colder and coldest. Then we have hot, caliente, hotter, hottest. Then we have deep, Profundo, deeper and deepest. Then we have um, little, pequeño, or in this case, poco. Then we have wide, that is amplio, wider and widest. 
Then we have low, bajo. But in this case, we can use it for sounds because we are talking about sounds that are low or lower. Then we have tall, alto. Then we have another one, thin. In this case, it's talking about fino, no simplemente delgado, fino. Thinner and thinnest. This is the first part of the vocabulary that we are talking about measuring. There is, um, a, in this case, una medida. So in, in, now we are going to talk about the location and that is the other part of the vocabulary because we have three parts. And after we are going to write the location, we are going to talk about the position as well. So we have the second part that is the location. And we're going to do it the same. And we have left, that in Spanish is izquierda, direction, dirección, north, norte, east, Este coordinates coordenadas position position horizontal horizontal towards Asia clockwise. Al sentido de las agujas del reloj, de las manecillas del reloj, forward, adelante. We have different kind of torn. We have torn, full torn. Then we have half torn, quarter torn. And we have torn is girar. Then uh, the whole torn is el giro completo. Uh, half torn is media vuelta. And the last one, quarter torn is un cuarto de giro, un cuarto de vuelta. Then we have close, cerca, far, lejos. Then we have near, proximo, center, centro, compass, brújula, south. Sur, West, Oeste, Had, Camino, Pan, the same in Spanish, Plan, Vertical, Vertical, Movement, Movimiento, Destination, destino. Backward. Hacia atrás, closer. Más cerca. Further. Más aún más. Nearer. Más cerca de. Right, derecha, 
map, mapa, route, ruta, journey, viaje, <coughs> read, cuadrícula, rotate, girar, diagonal, diagonal, away from, lejos de, I'll try, llegar, anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise, contrarreloj, sideways, Teacher, tell me. I have a question about the platform. Tell me. Eh, en un ejercicio tenemos, bueno, en un ejercicio tenemos la palabra dry. No sé dry. si es, ajá. Es, Ma no me acuerdo, no me acuerdo el significado. Manejar. Pero, no, dry. D -R -Y. Seco, seco. Ajá. Entonces, uh -huh. Me quise poner como dry, dryer, algo así, creo que se, que se como más seco. Uh -huh. Y me salió malo. ¿Le cambió y la le, Y? Sí. Uh, y le puse more, more y nada. Ok, let's see. Vamos a ver. I will stop sharing this because I am going to search for the platform. I'm going to see. Uh, which, um, tell me the number of um, the exercise. Um, I don't know, teacher. Really, really. I forgot okay. that. Let me, let me search for the example because we are talking about the comparative and superlative. En este caso estamos hablando de la parte de los comparativos y los superlativos. Así que déjenme entrar a la yeah. plataforma. Algo así me puso, como yo lo busco, en, no lo busco en, en el traductor de Google, sino uh -huh. que lo busco en Word Reference. Uh -huh. En el Word Reference. Entonces, me apareció así. Ok, let's see. Vamos a, a revisar el, el, el ejercicio. Y me salió malo. <ríe> mm. Vamos a ver por qué le salió malo. Don't worry. So, let's okay. see. I'm on the platform right now. And we need to search for the... The comparative and superlative. Let's see. Maybe in some cases, uh, the platform uh, have a specific uh, writing part y a veces no acepta lo, algunas cosas. Entonces, vamos a ver eh, qué, qué es lo que está dando el problema. So, let's see. Mm -mm. Comparison with adjective. I think that is the knowledge check. I guess. I don't, I don't know if it, it is the meter. Small, high, crowd, large, famous, high, okay. long. Exercise, Tell me. Exercise for six. Yes or no? Exercise six. But I don't know if this, um, it is the number 10, which for is. six. Number 10, yes. Uh -huh. Number Which 10. is dessert in the world? Atacama dessert of Sahara dessert. And we have the word dry. Dry, yeah. In this case, it is not comparative. No es comparativa. Es superlativa porque está preguntando cuál es el más eh, seco. So in this case, it's no ER at the end. No es ER al final. Es EST porque estamos hablando del superlativo. Dry okay. Y el de arriba, que es deep. Deepest. Porque como estamos hablando de superlativo. Ah. Okay, no, de, okay. no, de, no de comparativo, porque el comparativo es la R. Y R. En este caso es superlativo porque nos está haciendo preguntas. Ah, ok, ok. Uh -huh. Thanks. You're welcome. Sí, tenía dudas en esa. Ah, in this case es superlativo, no, no comparativo. El comparativo sí es el que lleva la ER al final porque nos está comparando entre dos cosas, pero en este caso nos hace una pregunta sobre ello. Entonces, en este caso es superlativa porque tenemos que escoger entre una de esas opciones. 
Ok, gracias. You're welcome. So, ok. We are going to continue after that. And if you have some questions you can ask about the platform, it's don't worry. You, um, we are here to help you. And I have to message. Oh, okay, it's the same. So we are going to end with uh, this part of the location. And we have side weights that it says that is the lado o a un lado. And we have the last one and that is closest. That is más cercano. And we have the position that is the last part of this vocabulary that is the position. And I think I have to close this because it's a little bit strange. Okay, we have the last part that is the position. Then we are going to talk about uh, the creation of questions with WH word, in this case, the how. How can we create questions using different parts? So we have for the position some vocabulary and we are going to do the same as in the other parts of the vocabulary. And we have five of these and we have eight of these. So. Let's begin with the position. We have above, that in Spanish is por encima de o arriba, front, frente, o enfrente, before, antes. Then we have beside, junto a. Then we have ahead, that is adelante, over, in, a través de, up, arriba, outside, afuera. Then we have bottom. That it means fondo de bajo inferior to a para en, on, in, but this means sobre, let's see. And don't worry, I will send you the examples. On, then we have in, that means in, but in this case, dentro. On, in, uh, but in this case is a sobre. Then we have in, in, dentro. Then we have close to, cerca de. Close to. Ascend. Ascend, ascending. In this case is ascender o subir. Start, comienzo. Halfway, medio camino. Then we have center again, centro, between and medio, o entre, next to, junto a, o al lado de, in front, enfrente, under, debajo, Around, alrededor. Through. A través o mediante. In this case, when we are using through, it's talking about um, passing through something, uh, for example, uh, through a, a piece of glass um, to uh, a specific uh, material. But in this case, it is not talking about because we have another one that is across. And in this case, it's passing um, across the street, passing across the country. Para el through is pasar a través de un 
eh, material, por ejemplo. And across, that is the, the next one, es a través de la calle, pasar a través de la calle, o a través del camino, o a través del país. So, oh. through is eh, talking about material, and across is to walk across the street. Then we have side, lado. Side, lado. Next side. place is el lugar, along, right. a lo largo. Apart, aparte. Then we have middle, en medio in. o mitad, below, por debajo. Below, por debajo. Back, below. atrás. Back, atrás. After, después, uh, opposite, uh, es opuesto. Behind, detrás. Underneath, debajo. Under, underneath, debajo. O inferior, down, hacia abajo. Down, hacia abajo. Inside. Inside. Dentro. dentro. Top, superior. Top. From the. And out, fuera. So, in this case, we have the vocabulary for position. So, we have three, um, three vocabularies. The number one is the vocabulary the measurements or measuring then we have the number two that is the location and the number three that is the position now after that that we are talking about the vocabulary we are going to talk about the structure because we are going to uh, know or learn how to create a uh, questions using how so we are going to Let's take this from this side. So let's see. How is a very useful word? So we have this word that is the one in which we are going to create sentences or questions in this case. So it says, how is a very useful word? And since questions with how is a big part of common conversation. So let's have a look at them. Sabemos que creamos preguntas con las WH words y se convierten en WH questions. Tenemos ese tipo de preguntas con las WH -E palabras. In this case, we are going to use the how, cómo. So, it says that this one is a very useful word. Es una palabra muy, muy, eh, eh, que no, no, no sirve mucho. Ya, la podemos usar mucho. And this is a big part of common conversation. Es una gran parte para las conversaciones. Can help us to establish conversation with other people and create um, questions to know more information about something. So how can be used with other words to make different type of questions? So it says, how can be used To, uh, I mean, can be used with other, with other words to make different type of questions and we have some examples. We have like this, a small list of these kind of examples. We have how far, how far, then we have how long, how much, and how many. So it says that a, This word how can be used with other words to make different type of questions. Of course, we know that how it's uh, when we are um, asking for 
uh, describing something, uh, something that happens or uh, when we want some uh, kind of information. But in this case, we can use different words to make different type of questions. Utilizando el how, con otras palabras, podemos crear diferentes tipos de preguntas. Y tenemos ahí los ejemplos. How far, how long. In this case, how far is talking about a, a trip, for example, or a journey. Eh, ¿Cuánto tiempo nos va a tomar? ¿verdad? O cómo de lejos está un lugar a, al que vamos a viajar. How long? ¿Cuánto tiempo va a tomar hacer algo? Eh, how much? ¿Cuánto cuesta una cosa? And how many? ¿Cuántos habían? ¿Cuántas personas habían, digamos, en una reunión? Beside those, um, how can be used with adjectives to make a question? So in this case, we are using this kind of question, but we also can use how with adjectives. So then we have some examples with the adjectives. How can be used with adjectives? to make questions. And we have some examples. We have here the examples. And the first one we have how confident are you? Confident is the adjective. So in that case, we have the adjective to create a question. How confident are you? In this case, we can say, ¿Qué tan seguro estás? O como de, o como de seguro te sientes? So in that case, we are talking about seguridad, de cómo nos sentimos. How easy is it? In this case, we are talking about uh, something that we are doing. How easy is it? In this case, easy is the adjective. ¿Qué tan fácil está? O ¿Cómo de fácil está? That is the question. And how difficult do you think it is? How difficult do you think it is? ¿Qué tan complicado, qué tan difícil crees que es? Before we see the different type of question you can make with the word how, remember that we can also use the word how to make negative and affirmative sentence. So in this case, we have the how, the word how, and in this case, we can use it for negative and for a affirmative sentence. It is no a difference in this because we are going to use it with both negative and affirmative sentence. So we are going to have this content in this topic. We are going to have a question with how far, sentence and question with how long, sentence and questions with how much, sentence and questions with how many, question with how plus adjective, question and answer with how, discussion question with how, and we have related information about this kind of question of this kind of work. So we are going to begin with the part number one and we have question with how far. That's the number one. The first thing that we are going to develop, questions with how far. In this case, it says, I'm a Dominic question we can make with how we have how far. How far means to what extent, distant or degree. So we are going to write this specification. How far means to what extent, distant or degree. And we have some examples.
how far is the beach from here? Another one, how far can he walk? How far can she run? How far can we travel into this forest? We can also make negative and affirmative sentence with how far. So we're going to have negative. And it says, I don't know how far the beach is from here. It's like the answer for the first question because someone is asking how far is the beach from here? And this one is the answer, but in negative form. I don't know how far the beach is from here. Then about the second question, how far, oh, how far can he walk? In this case, we are going to um, answer in negative uh, sentence. I am not sure about how far she can walk. But in this case is uh, changing uh, the subject. And the last one, uh, she knows how far we can walk into this forest. She don't know. She doesn't know how far we can walk into this forest. So we have like the answers for some of these questions. So in this case, we have some questions that are in affirmative part using how far and it, it talk about the extent, distant or degree of something. And then we have negative uh, answers or responses that uh, in this case, we can use it in positive and negative. And also it functions really well. Then we have the number two. It says sentence and question with how long? How long? And it says that how long means the following things. So we are going to create a list. It has a different meaning. So we are going to create this small list about the meanings of how long. What length and what duration. These are some examples of sentences that you can make with how long. So we have here the examples. And it says, um, I don't know how long
the Amazon River is. Then the second one, she knows how long that field is. It's talking about the duration of the uh, movie. I am not sure how long that woman live in that old house. And we have some examples. In this case, we have some sentences and now we are going to have some examples of questions. And we have number one. It says, how long is that piece of a string? How long is that piece of a string? ¿Qué tan larga es esa pieza de, eh, in this case, string is like, um, esta cuerda de las que utilizan para la guitarra y cosas así. So in that case, we can use it as an example. How long is that piece of a string? Then we have another one and it says, how long is the flight? ¿Qué, eh, ¿Qué tan largo va a ser el vuelo? En este caso estamos hablando del tiempo. ¿Cuánto tiempo se va a tardar? How long did you live here? Up there. And the last one, how long is the film? Then we have the number three. Sentences and question with how much? It says that we use how much with countable nouns. So in this case, we have uh, two kinds of uh, questions. In this case, we have how much, but also we have how many. And in this case, we are using how much with countable nouns. The countable nouns are things that we can count, like um, vegetable, like fruits, like pencils, like pen, like... Um, let's see, like clothes, um, like rocks, something that we can count. And how many um, it's used to talk about uncountable nouns. And in that case is talking about the starts, it's talking about sugar, salt, and some all that things. So tenemos esas dos preguntas, how much and how many? que hablan de nombres, pero en este caso el how much nos está hablando de nombres contables, cosas que podemos contar. Y el how many eh, habla sobre las cosas que no podemos contar, como el azúcar, ¿verdad? Cuando estamos hablando de los granos. No estamos hablando de las libras o de los quintales, sino de los granos. So in that case, it's an uncountable now. O por ejemplo, el aceite que no lo podemos contar, sino que medir. So now we have some examples with uh, this and uh, how much.
we have questions and we have some sentences in this list. So we have both of them in the same list. How much money do you have? I have like three dollars in my purse. In this case, is the is the answer for this question. So we are going to separate them. I have like three dollars in my purse. So in this case, it's a asking how much money uh, they have or she has or he has. So it's talking about the amount of money. And uh, this uh, person answers, I have like $3 in my purse. We can count the, uh, the money. So it's accountable now. En la primera pregunta nos eh, hace, obviamente, la pregunta de cuánto dinero tenemos. Y la respuesta es, tengo como tres dólares en mi cartera. So in that case, we can count the, uh, the money and we can give an answer. So we have the next one. How much travel did it cost? It says it was it was a pretty hard error to find. Why, if I am saying that we have countable nouns with uh, this kind of question, and I have the word um, travel, did it cost? What are we talking about? In this case, maybe we are talking about and a specific error that's something that we can count and maybe it's an error in counting something in an office or something in a store and it's uh it says it was a pretty hard error to find so in este caso cuando nos pregunta qué tanto problema causó el qué que nos faltaba algo por ejemplo so in this case we are talking about how much because estamos hablando de algo que podemos contar, algo que nos falta. En una lista, en maybe um, en una tienda, en algo por el estilo, entonces aquí lo contamos, porque es un nombre contable de algo que nos falta. Y la respuesta, it was a pretty, a pretty hard error to find. Es un, eh, fue un um, error bastante difícil o un poco difícil de encontrar porque no estábamos seguros qué nos faltaba o cuánto nos faltaba. So in that case, we are going to use the how much because we are talking about countable nouns. Then we have the next one and it says, how much tea would you like? And the answer is, I don't feel like drinking tea today. So in this case, we're talking about the, the cup of tea. How many cup of tea would you like? It is not like um, the uh, liquid. We are talking about the uh, glasses or the cups of tea. Then we have the other one that it says, oh, this is not a question. And it says, how much time do you have? I have 15 minutes. to submit this homework. ¿Cuánto tien, tiempo tienes? How uh, much time do you have? I have 15 minutes to submit this homework. 
Tengo 50 minutos para entregar esta tarea. So it's talking about how many minutes or how many times do we have. Then we have the last one. How much fun did you have? It was kind of boring. How much fun did you have? And in this case, it was kind of boring is an informal way to say it was kind of boring. So in this case, we are using this a uh, very informal way to write. Then we have the number four. And it says a sentence and question with how many. And we have the examples. So in this case, uh, we are going to um, doing something. In this case, um, we have some kind of, a, how can I say, um, confusion with this a, a, a structure, because in this case, um, we are going to change it. And we are going to explain in the, in the, in the meantime. How many websites? What size do you have? I have seven sites. Then we have how many Facebook friends? Did you have? So in this case, we're talking about something unreal because um, in this case, we are talking about uh, the number in a website or in a social media of something that it is not um, even real because in this case, uh, we are not seeing these uh, people that we have add in the account. So in this case, we're talking about um something unreal. Facebook friends. And then it says how many? Tickets did you buy? And the answer I bought tickets. For the three of us. Then it says that after that we have these uh, four um, structure for questions, <clears throat> we have another one that is the questions with the how plus the adjective. So we are going to add it in the number five because we're going to add it to the list and we have questions with how plus adjectives. So you can make question with how and adjectives by adding an adjective after it. It's very simple. 
So we have here the small list and it's the last thing that we're going to say today because it's almost time to end this session. So we have how well, how well do you know Maria? In this case, this one is the adjective. Then it says, how quickly, how quickly can you finish? Your homework. How quickly this one. Then we have, how fast are you? How fast are you? And we have here the adjective. How spicy is the food? So in that case, we're creating a question with adjectives and we can use all the adjectives that we already uh, learned to create this kind of question. Because in this um, kind of question, we are going to use the how plus the adjective. So in that case, we are saying that we first write the WH word, then we are going to write the adjective and then the complement of the sentence. So we can create a lot of um, question with how and adjective. So for example, how pretty is she? How, um, let's see how expensive is this um, backpack? How cold is the, is the juice? Um, how how sweet is the chocolate and all of that kind of question because we are using the adjectives to create sentence. So um, tomorrow we are going to develop the question and answer with how discussion questions with how we have a lot of questions. Then we are going to develop the next topic that is the present continuous. We are going to see what is the present continuous and examples, formula and all of that. But that is for tomorrow. Now it's time to say goodbye. And we are going to see each other tomorrow and remember to work in the platform. And if you have some troubles, you can ask in the group. So have a good night and see you tomorrow. See you, you. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.